Hello everyone. Thank you for joining another video of Nokri Learning. Today we are going to build a tool or an automated report generating tool using Python and Airflow. So uh, to get a context about this, in most of the organizations as or as an individual, we always run into scenarios in which we want to run some programs on a regular basis and we need some kind of cron jobs or any uh, framework that can handle that stuff. So one very popular tool uh, out there in the industry is Airflow via which you can schedule multiple tasks and those will run at a given interval. So today we are going to build a report generating ETL pipeline using Python and Airflow. So let's uh, quickly look at the tools that we are going to use. Of course it will include Python and it will include a web scraping part as well which will be doing via some package then uh, for the example that we are going to take we are going to use a newspaper package so the program that we want to build is to get all the latest uh, links for a particular topic and all the news links for that particular topic once we have the link we will get the most important and significant image the title of the news and or uh, the summary of the news and then we will put it into a summarized web page and store it in our local or uh, storage okay so this is the program flow that we are going to use and via this example we will learn how we can use airflow how we can uh, download and install that using docker and so this will also give you a basic understanding and uh, introduction to docker also we are going to look uh, into how to maintain this ETL pipeline and run and schedule and create tags we will be using airflow and we will be using docker as well so the architecture of the program would be we will get all the links for a particular news from google search results create uh, all the summaries and get the important images from the news and put it in a html file and run this procedure every day in the morning and update a particular file Okay, so the learnings from this exercise would be we would have introduction about Airflow and how we can put all of our regular maintaining programs over there and run them on a scheduled basis. Also, we will look into how Docker is used in production environment and how we can Dockerize all the app that we built. So we're going to need Docker in order to install Airflow. Also, we will create the pipeline using Python and store it in uh, github and alongside it we have added few uh, of the references which we will add in the readme in the github uh, repository link in the description below prior which you can uh, go on and read more about each package and uh, references for each framework that we are going to use so for the next step uh, i'm here in my pycharm ide we have set up a new virtual environment in which i will be writing all the codes Okay, so uh, to understand the flow of this uh, reporting program, we have taken one example in which we will get all the major um, news links from Google search result for a particular topic, get their URL and get uh, all the news articles from that and then summarize them and put them in a HTML file. So to get the links of all the news for a particular topic, Within a given sp time span, we will use a package called GNews in Python. So you can either directly write pip install GNews in your terminal, or you can go ahead in your PyCharm ID and in the interpreter settings, you would be able to search for it and then add it. Okay. Great. So once this package is there, now we can go ahead and get uh, the links of all the news for a given time span and get their titles and URLs from the links. Okay. So just for this example, uh, these are the set of codes that we'll be using. So at a global level, we are just setting up our SSL certificate to an unverified certificate so that we do not have any issues while requesting Google's uh, pages. Once this is done, 
all we need to do is create an object of genius class which can be imported from genius module in which we will be setting up the language as preferred language the country the period from which you want to extract the links of news for so for this example i'm just taking one day of as a time frame and then how many urls that you want to fetch so i'm just for this example i'm going ahead with two urls right now okay so what it will go do is it will go to google's search result search for this particular topic that you are giving uh, as an input to the next function and get an object of genius class which will have few attributes which will include attributes like title url description image links and stuff okay so let's go ahead and see how this renders out so i'll just quickly print this out okay so we can see that uh, indeed it is able to fetch us the urls of the news like the one that it has fetched out from here so i can copy this email and sorry copy this url and check whether this is an active news or not yes indeed it is an active news uh, so it is able to fetch out the news url as well as the title of the uh, news similarly this is another example of that so for the next step what we will do is we will fetch out uh, say n numbers of urls via this g news package and then we will use another module called newspaper module which will have very high level codes which will be able to go to a particular url get summarized news text and also provide us with the title and the most important image in that entire page okay so what we we'll need to do is we can pip install newspaper 3k we will provide the requirements txt file for this entire uh, flow or you can just search in your interpreter for newspaper 3k newspaper 3k and then you can go ahead and download that along with it you will also need nltk package which it uses as a dependency and in nltk package we would require pn KT uh, resource which will help uh, the newspapers backend to run okay so once we install newspaper via pip install command or via uh, the graphical interface and once we have installed NLTK as well we can we need to download the PNTK tokenizer from uh, NLTK resources so this is just one uh, program or like a snippet of code that will be helping you to download that you can just copy paste this directly okay so i'll just call this function along with ssl uh, as well so just let me comment this line out and let's see how this entire thing works so once ssl is done we will download nltk resources okay okay then we can create an object of article class article class where we can specify a url we'll just copy paste this particular url okay so once we have an object of this article class we need to run a few methods on top of it one is going to be download once we download that we need to parse the html okay and then we can run some nlp model on top of that once all these three methods are done we will have a few set of or attributes populated for this particular instance one would be title and then would be article dot top image and then article dot summary okay i'm just going to print this out with a suppression of new line character and and is equal to a table new line okay i'm going to quickly form 
format this and then run this. Okay. So once this runs, so you see it uh, is setting up the global downloads. So this is just one comment that I have written in general while creating this function. So it says over there. Then it's downloading the NLTK resources. Okay. Then it's printing out the title of newspaper that we have the top image of the newspaper so let's confirm this once so this is the like key image that we should be looking at so let's get and see whether yeah so this is one of the top image and the image around which the entire uh, newspaper uh, news is based on so we are getting that image as well along and not any other distracting image that is there on the website and then we have the summary of the particular news okay so let's post, put this two together uh, in your function and let's see how that works out okay so for this what I'm doing is I have created a few uh, functions right here first is setting up your global SSL which we have looked at the next would be downloading the NLTK packages yes so if you do not have PUN ticket token as well, it will go ahead and download that and the next would be getting all the links from Google for a particular topic with a maximum article limits which you can customize by default it is set to 5. So all you need to do is call this function, pass the topic name that you want to get uh, the news around and by default its period is set to one day and country is India, language is English. If you want to change any of these you can go ahead at this particular URL which will add in the uh, readme doc over here you will have certain set of customization that you can do so you will have list of all the countries allowed countries along with their uh, code names the English and their code names and what all properties or uh, sorry attributes that you can get so you have title URL published date, description and the publisher name similarly you will have all the instances or uh, all the methods that you can call and all the attributes that you have along with this class okay so what this function essentially is doing is it's getting list of like all the genius um, instance for a particular topic and giving me like max n number of urls and returning that okay then based on that for each url we will be calling the genius article and do the similar process we will fetch the url download that then parse that and return the article okay and finally we will be creating a summary so let's look at these two in pipeline how this looks like so i will just remove these all these three so i will set my ssl then i will go ahead and download the NLTK resources if it's not available then so i will get so say if i have a topic of news in india i will go ahead and get news about this links of all the news that i can get for this particular topic so i will pass topic is equal to topic and max article is equal to three for now so once we have all the links we will go to the newspaper methods okay we'll go to this particular function and for each article we will download parse and run the nlp models okay and store that in an article list okay so for that i will just do a list comprehension so articles is equal to for a in links for each link i will run this method 
let's name this link right now rather than links link I will run this method for each link and store that in the article okay I will simply remove those articles if they do not have any content for that I am just writing another list comprehension itself article for article in articles if article if the article is itself not an empty and article dot summary is also not empty and just write this like this okay so what we are doing is we are getting all the links from google search result for a given topic with a max cap of three articles then for each link that we receive we are going to get the title their summary and the top image that they offer and put that in a list comprehension and put them in a list of articles okay so let's see how this articles look articles once you have this which okay. i will just make it expand the separation of new line okay so let's go ahead and run this okay so we are getting three links so this is giving us an article object okay and it has successfully worked so just to see each um, attribute for each particular uh, article we can print them out Great. So now we have uh, successfully downloaded three articles in which we have the title, the summary of that article and the link of one particular photo. Okay. So we are going to put this uh, into a web page, which we can update on a regular basis for the next step in which we will render the HTML. For that, we are going to use a Jinja template. So Jinja template is an advanced version of kind of F string only where you can put uh, your Python code inside a HTML part and it will be able to access all the keys and variables from the template itself. Okay. And we are going to render that by a Jinja to package. So here's a sample uh, HTML page that I have created. So it has like basic syntax like the head part. Uh, it starts with the HTML language is equal to en, then the head tag, then comes the body. So in head tag, we can uh, include styles uh, for each particular heading and image, how they are going to look. So you can, you can customize it uh, as you like, or you can leave the customization altogether aside. Okay, then we come to the body part. So here is what is going to happen. So anything that you put within double curly bra braces, is treated as a uh, variable inside it so when i render this template i can pass a variable named today and the value of that particular variable will be printed over here once it renders similarly i can uh, write for loops just like this so with curly braces and a percentage sign i can uh, write a for loop which says for each article in articles so articles is going to be another variable that I'm going to provide while rendering this. So this, com this comes from the list of articles that we just generated by the newspaper uh, method. And for each article, we will create a href like heading tag, where we will include the article's URL so that one can click on that page and get to the article. And then we will uh, 
put the most important image as an image and then we're going to also put the summary of the article over there okay and then we finally going to end the for for it then we have closing the body and the closing the HTML okay so I have saved this as a HTML file and we are going to open this HTML file read this template and provide it to Jinja template class to create an object of template okay so for that let's quickly look at this fun particular function so what it does is it uh, does the exact same thing that we are doing right now it fetches all the links from Google okay then uh, for each particular uh, URL that it gets it creates a list of articles and for each article object we are going to put that in that ginger template and render a final HTML file okay so this function takes a topic the template txt which we are going to read and open and provide it to this particular function the output file path where the final output HTML file is going to be stored at and then number of articles that we want to fetch so by default it's again set to 5 okay so for uh, each links that we get from this we are creating getting the newspaper article and we are removing all those articles which do not have any summary or which themselves are empty then we are going to create a template class from jinja to the template package so we're going to just import that uh, in our <coughs> uh, packages we are going to import jinja2 and then once jinja2 is imported we are going to pass the context so these are the variables that are going to be used inside the template like today is one variable and articles is another variable okay which is going to be a list of uh, article so for today uh, articles we are passing the entire article uh, list for today is the date stamp of today so that we can uh, create a name or heading tag for it then we're going to open the output file render this template and write it over there only and then we're going to finally close that and say that creating news summary output is complete okay. so let's uh, quickly run this once and let's see how this works for this i will just comment these three lines first i need to open uh, the template and store it in a template txt let me name this as template file path it's going to be this particular file path okay so with open template file path with read mode as file and read entire text of it and let's just print it once so that we are sure that we are getting the same template that we are expecting okay we are getting that so now I need to call this particular function and it will handle all such cases and write it in my output file path okay for that I will just duplicate this line make this output file path and I will provide this as my output file name So once we have the output file path, I will provide topic is equal to topic template text is going to be my template text output file path is going to be my output file path. Then that's it. It's going to format this a little bit. Okay, so let's quickly run this and see what we are getting. So it's got five links and it's downloaded in them uh, and it has written uh, the final output over in this page okay 
So just to open this uh, and see how it looks, you can just directly copy the path. In your web browser, you can paste the local link where the HTML file resides and you can click over here. Okay, great. So we see the date of the day in which this video is getting created. Then we are able to see a, a heading tag for each particular heading. And then we also have the embedded link of the entire article. So you can click on it and go to that particular page uh, where this entire article is there. Along with that, along with that, you're getting the image uh, via which like which is the top image in that particular article and you also get a summary of the entire news. So this is just a formatting style that I have put in the HTML template. You can choose any other color, any formatting that you like. Okay. Great. So we have our final output and the entire process set over here where we are getting the top uh, end links for a particular news uh, around the topic for last one days and then we are fetching the entire article getting their title their summary and uh, finally the important image that we have and then putting them together in a html file that will be generated every day so that we have a summarized newspaper article uh, in our hand at the morning of every day all we need to do is put this entire thing in automation so that it runs automatically every day at a designated time okay or any particular schedule that you like so for this we are going to use uh, airflow so now comes this important part of airflow that's why uh, we can see that i have uh, put some other folders like dags logs plugins okay so these are airflow related folders that we need to create in order to put our files into airflow so before that, uh, let me just quickly walk you through the installation process of Airflow. So for Airflow to get installed, you can either go to our readme's. Over here, you will find how to uh, install Airflow. You can simply search for Docker Compose Airflow. So you'll come to a page like this, running Airflow in Docker. Then over here, you will have this curl file. Okay. All you need to do is copy this part. We will also provide this uh, in our readme link. So you just need to copy this part. Let me close this uh, together. And in your environment terminal, all you need to do is paste this and press enter. So once you do that, you will uh, the curl will automatically download a uh, yeah, docker compose.yaml file so just to give an overview of what docker is so docker is a tool which virtualizes your um, operating system so that you can run multiple containers on top of it so containers are like individual apps which have their separate environment altogether and docker compose is a set of instruction that tells how many containers and I need to build which all are interacting with each other so it's a set of um, flow while creating an environment so over here we can specify multiple containers which are themselves each microservice or an app okay so over here we can uh, put some databases links we can create web servers we can create accelerated workers and triggers so this is already done by the airflow community and you can directly download it over here so once you uh, download this it will have all these codes written over here all you need to do um, is just put your uh, requirements that you require in this particular line wherever you find underscore pip underscore additional requirements you will be able to put all your requirements that you need in a single line like this okay within curly braces so next time it creates the environment it will be able to install all these packages along with while creating the container okay great so 
there is also one thing over here since it's a virtual environment altogether and since it's a virtualization of the entire operating system you need to map few folders with the other virtual machines folders so right now airflow uses a folder called tags to store all its procedures and programs which it should run okay so for that we are going to create one more folder in our repository at a root directory say tags and logs and plugins and we are going to map that to the virtual containers folder structure like we are going to map our plugins to this particular folder inside airflow's environment similarly DAX and logs okay so once we have uh, downloaded the docker compose yaml file the next step is to install docker into our machine so for that you can go to browser search for docker install okay so in the official deposit uh, url you will find the installation procedure for each a platform that you are using it could be Mac Linux and Windows so for me it's Mac so I will go ahead and download docker desktop for Mac or Apple chip and it will start downloading a package that you can next uh, then install after that you will uh, be able to search for docker in your apps and you will be able to start that okay so right now I have few containers in it so it will show interface something like this and you will be able to see a notification either in the top bar or if you're a mac user or in the bottom right hand corner if you're a windows user that docker is running okay so once your docker is running the next step is creating a dag via which we can run the entire process using airflow okay so we will build the airflow service all together in docker from this docker compose file create a dag which will run the entire flow and we will schedule that you can go ahead and put all your necessary codes in in the dax folder okay like what i have done right now you can keep the requirement as txt over here or you can move it outside at the root place as well this does not matter and then uh, just to keep my configuration aside whatever variable that i have um so so whatever variable like topic template files output files that i have used i will just move them and keep them as a config file so it's kind of best practice to keep your all the files handy at one particular place so that you do not uh, need to go into program to change everything so i will just import this particular config file uh, in the final program that i'm going to write and all these uh, functions that I have created i will just put this in a pipeline.util file or any utils file or anything that you need to want to call it so these are all the helper functions that i'm going to need to create my entire pipeline once all this is set now comes the important part of creating a dag a dag or uh, is a graphical structure where you can specify what task need to be prioritized first and then which comes the next okay so you can specify multiple tasks which are interlinked or maybe individually run runnable programs that you can put in a single flow and create an entire pipeline out of it and run that in airflow interface okay so i'm going to close this as well right now so this is the pipeline dag that i want to create okay so for this we are going to just import uh, one standard package called bindler so let me go to the official documentation of airflow and python operator okay once you come to this page you will be able to see multiple examples of particular operator and you can go to the source code and see how it is done okay so just to give an overview idea the spindle model is just to give uh, the date time of a particular DAG. then uh, when we are running a DAG, we need to import from airflow a DAG class so this is a directed graph which will be uh, responsible for creating multiple tasks and interlinking them okay then from the decorators i'm creating importing a task decorator so this will be able to put one of my functions as a task okay these are few set of 
parameters that you need to specify while creating a class of DAG, the DAG ID, the schedules. So in this, you need to put a cron tab schedule. So if you're not familiar with cron uh, notation, you can go to cron guru. Okay, so over here, this is how we write cron. Okay, so it states this, uh, if you copy this and paste it over here as a text, okay, this will state that this particular entire flow will run at five minutes past 4 a.m. every day. Okay, and similarly, you can play around and specify some other timings as well. So, four to six, it will run five past every hour from four through five. And if you want to run it even more, you can pass 23 or you can pass till 6 every minute from 5 through 6 every past hour 4 to 23. And if you want to run it by hourly, so you can write 4 to 6 by hourly. Okay. And you can uh, learn more about how to write crow notations. So this is just one uh, this is one tool that you can use to create your cron notations okay then we can specify catch up is equal to false so what catch up does is once you set the date time and once you restart the DAG will it try to run all the intermediate steps that were there that you have already missed so right now I do not want that I'm just putting that as a false and you can specify some tags or relate to particular pipeline so if you are doing some NLP pipeline then you can write NLP pipelines you can uh, write reporting pipelines and you can write examples and miscellaneous and something like that you can put tags over here so now comes the important part okay now we are going to create a task or uh, inside this tag which will run our flow okay so for that uh, let me quickly remove this particular part okay so for that we are using a decorator called task so it will be able to take this function as an input and render this as a task instance uh, of this particular DAG. so for that you're going to import from airflow.decorators task and over here this will help us to put a task id to the entire or uh, task that we are going to create so generally it's a good practice to keep your task id the function name and finally the variable in which you're storing the task are uh, kind of same so that it will ease up the understanding of the front end infrastructure with the back end code okay so once we do that for this particular task i'm going to need a few packages so one is going to be the config in which i have all the global variables and the other going to be the util file from which i am going to import my helper functions okay so since this particular uh, program is going to run in the virtual environment in the virtual machine so all the parts and uh, file are going to be related and relatable to that particular machine's folder structure so remember in the docker compose sorry, in the docker compose we have mapped our dags folder to their opt slash airflow slash dags folder similarly logs and plugins so just to access this, these two particular files, I need to go to this particular directory in that virtual environment and fetch these two. So for that, I'm just going to add these two in our um, system path so that Python is able to recognize these as valid paths and search our modules over there. So if it's the first time, you can write sys.path.append this particular um, set of string similarly for config as well okay and uh, just remember in your global configs as well wherever you have output and input file paths those are going to be uh, the paths which are mapped in that particular environments machine so i'm going to use since dag is my uh, the folder in which i'm storing i'm just going to use this particular prefix over everywhere that i'm going to access okay so once you have added these two in your path, you can import your global configs. So from config, I'm going to import topic max article 
count the file template file path the upload file path and similarly for utils I'm going to import all the help functions that I'm going to need setting is global SSL downloading analytic resources and then finally creating new summary output so this particular uh, function uses these two as well so these two will get automatically imported in the file so once that is done I'm just going to print uh, the global variables just to see if everything is working or not then I will read the template file just as we did in that other file and then we're going to run this particular set of codes and put the output in the file and this particular task is named as oh, newspaper underscore summary underscore report underscore daily task as a variable okay so once this all is done you need to go to your terminal okay and you need to write docker compose up so this will build the entire service the entire infrastructure in doc as a docker container it will interlink all the services together and if you're running this for the first time it will download few of the images and the packages that you require okay so for me i'm just running this uh, for the second time or so so it's a little bit faster in the second run since it uses few of the catch images and uh, packages okay just to see the if the output is working or not i'll just remove this particular file from our uh, directory right now so that we can build this via airflow so once you get this healthy set of logs you can go to your web browser and search for local host 8080 this will take you to the airflows page so by default it's uh id and password is going to be airflow and airflow okay so once you're here you are able to see this kind of interface okay where you will have the DAG's name so this is the name that we had given to our DAG uh, if you remember just to show you okay so here is the DAG ID or the DAG name that we had created and that's showing up over here okay who is the owner so you can either specify your owner tag while creating this DAG instance then it will show your name otherwise it will uh, take directly as a as owner then this is the schedule so five minutes past 4 a.m every day it will run this is the last time it has run this is the next day it is scheduled to run okay and then the, here are the links of few of the charts that you can see from here as well you can look at the code that we are using right now so this is similar this is the same code that is reflected in the front end okay also you will be able to see the graph of this uh, particular DAG and the stats okay this is a, like good monitoring environment that they have created and then finally the important part is you can trigger the DAG right away if you want so from this play button you can click and trigger the DAG so this particular section is for DAG runs the entire process runs okay so if it is light green that means it's running if it's red that means it has failed if it's gray then it was skewed and if it is deep green then it's already succeeded and these are the task instances so if you have multiple tasks in one DAG then you will be able to see them running uh, and showing up over here okay so this particular process has run and in this instance if you go to the graph you will be able to see the logs as well the runtime logs that we have uh, we are getting from the program so this is the same output that we got while we were running in this in our local environment in the terminal so it's reading the template it's starting the pipeline setting the global ssl downloading the packages creating summary as file then it got 10 links because in the config we had specified 10 links then it created the output file so right now remember we had deleted the output file we again got the new file so if you right click and copy the path copy absolute path and you can go over here and see it okay great similarly if you want to look at news from some other countries okay 
you can go ahead and run this tag once again. I started running. You can also see the runtime logs. Okay, getting all the news links for United States. And it wrote to the file. Okay, so if you now we refresh this file, we should get the summarized news for US for this particular day. Okay, great. Now we are getting uh, news for America. Okay. Yeah. So this is the process in which you can set up your own workflows and reporting pipelines in Airflow and keep them running every day. So as long as the, your Docker is running and as long as this Airflow is running, you will be able to run this entire flow without any intervention from your side chronologically. And you can create multiple complex tasks using Airflow and keep them scheduled and you will be able to lively monitor them using the stats and the logs as well. Also, you will have multiple uh, options of failures. So you will be able to retry after failures. You can specify the number of retries that you want to go to. So for that, I highly recommend you check the Airflow documentation. Okay, over here you will have great uh, idea about how Airflow works and how to create very like, customized and efficient pipelines. So with that note, uh, this session comes to an end. So just to summarize our learnings, we have learned how to create a news article summarizer. Then we have uh, got an introduction about Docker and Docker Compose. Then we got an introduction to Airflow and how we can build ETL pipelines using Python. Okay. So if you have liked this session, please share it with your peers and friends. Please do uh, give us your feedbacks and suggestions in the comment sections. And please subscribe to Nokri Learning for more such videos. Thank you and good day.